I'm sorry, sir. He's dead and you want me to find a chest? It's important to me. Personal belongings. You have a strange way of showing grief for your boy. Where'd he come from? Who, 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 we, who are you people? We, we picked you up yesterday. We're police officers. Where you going, big boy? Lose yourself, clown. Right, you're just it. Hey, how you been? He's sick. Now you better untire. I drop. Blow your guts out.
that kid. That was the Sea Eagle out of the Breeze's Marina, right? Right. You're a regular marine encyclopedia. Anybody ever tell you that? Look, Scow, I know the owner of that boat. John Woods. So? So the only way you'll ever get that boat away from him is to kill him. You pull in that line while I get this tub underway. What do you got in the case, Mr. Scow? Sure as hell isn't all that bonita we ain't been catching. You're gonna pull in that line. using my Christmas present. No, it'll work after all this time, believe it or not. What's up? Uh, I got a call from the uh, Coast Guard. Seems they found a cabin cruiser, scuttled. That sounds like the crime of the century already. Well, the only thing is, when it took off, Pepper, there were three people aboard. One was a stockbroker, a young guy named uh, Woods, his fiance, a model, and a bogus crew member. How bogus? Well, they found the guy who should have been manning her, wasted. So his killer obviously went on board in his place. They don't know what happened next, except that when they located the boat, they didn't locate the three people. Why don't you help yourself to a beer? Our divers went down to have a look. Somebody had disconnected the water intake manifold and just pumped her full of seawater. Then why didn't it sink completely? Not this boat, Sergeant Anderson. It's equipped with a special flotation collar right here. So mm -hmm. she took on water up to the bridge, but that was it. I'll tell you what I'd like to do, Commander. I'd like to have our own lab men take a look at her. Sure thing. What do you make of it? Piracy, drug trafficking. Mm -hmm. And now homicide. Juan Segaris and uh, that couple, probably. We've had six other boats missing and not recovered, so we sent out a special bulletin to alert the boat owners. Looks like we missed this one. I got a couple of guys out uh, looking for Jack O'Malley. The harbor detective tells me he knows more about boats and owners than anybody in this area. Is that true? Yeah. Well, good luck if you can find him. He's been into the booze for about a year now, so he could be anywhere in the area or in any skid row on the coast. Would he know something if he were sober? Sober? Oh, yeah. Whitfield? You. I'm McManus. How do you do? How well, much further down can you go on this one than you can this old one? Huh. Look, you study diving in your own time. I'm interested in finding my son. Oh, partner. It just helps, you know. I know a little bit about a lot of things in my business. Your boy, Scott. How long did you say he was missing? Well, he, he's not exactly missing. Not in the true sense. And why'd you call me? Look, my boy and me, we had a disagreement about how to conduct a salvage operation. He took off. And I, uh, well, I'd like to patch things up. Yeah, when was that? When did he take off? Oh, a few weeks ago. Where'd he go? I heard he signed up on a fishing boat in this area that runs up and down the coast. What's the name of it? There are over a hundred of them sailing out of here. And I just don't have the time to do any more checking than I've already done. Well, I see. But you're willing to pay a private investigator $150 a day in expenses just to babysit your boy? He's 20 years old. He's old, isn't he? Whitfield. Yeah. Please. Look, I, I called his girlfriend. She's real worried, too. What's her name? Karen. Karen Walters. What I find her? She works in a cafe on Chapman, right across from Land's End. Uh, what'd you say his name was? O'Malley. Jack O'Malley. The cops usually pay a little cash for information. Is that correct? <laughs> You've been watching a little television. Huh? Well, 
How about a, a five? Well, thanks. What about O'Malley now, the information? Oh, I'm new down around here. I just got him from Portland, but uh, I've heard the name. So if you just keep asking around, I just settle for a deuce. Mm, O'Malley. That's right. Well, you said Jack. I know uh, Jackson. Jackson O'Malley. We're trying to locate him. Oh, he's in pretty bad shape, that one is. We've heard. Uh, any idea where? Well, there's a couple of flop houses he's been favoring the last couple of months. Got some names? Yeah, the uh, Star and the Waldorf Square. You can check out either one of them. Thank you, good buddy. Scal's the one on the bridge. Scal hired out of the hand, huh? Yes. Where were they headed? They were going to fish the waters off the Baja. How come you know that? His daddy didn't. Scott didn't want him to know. He asked a lot of people not to tell him if he asked. Want some more coffee? Yeah, a little bit. What did you hear from that? He called from San Diego Saturday. That's good. What do you have to say? Sit down. Um, nothing much. A little personal stuff, you know. But I could tell something was wrong. He sounded, uh, well, scared. You know what a seal is? Not the animal. A Navy seal. Oh, no. like Frogman. Yeah, exactly. Only tougher. Well, uh... Scott spent uh, two years in Vietnam at the end of the war in a SEAL unit. And he doesn't scare easily. What's Scal and the rest of the crew like? I don't know. They, uh, have well, been around here a little over a year and, uh, pretty much loners. Why did Scott have a fight with his dad? I don't know. They must have told you something. Only that, uh, his father had lost sight of his values, like Scott put it, and he wanted to protect him. Two joggers found him washed up on the beach. Looks like the sharks already got to him. Jeez, how'd you ever identify that? He was wearing these. Scott McManus, U.S. Navy. Cause of death? Yeah, probably drowning. Well, he won't know till after the autopsy. You know, the Sea Eagle was scuttled about a half mile offshore. Could he have been on it? Yeah, sure he could have. He probably went over the side before she went down. I don't know what the kid was into, do you? No, sure don't. Mr. McManus, can you tell me where your son was working recently? The sign outside says McManus and son. Now, Scott was a part of this business. I'm sure you've snooped around enough to know my boy took off three weeks ago. Can you tell me why? It's none of your business. You just find out who killed him. That's what you cops are paid for, not to pry into our private lives. Mr. McManus, that's what I'm trying to do, sir, to find out who killed him. That's why I'm asking these questions. Sir, the Coast Guard, it's located a cabin cruiser, the Sea Eagle. It was scuttled about a half a mile off the coast. Do you have any idea? Do you know if Scott ever worked on the Sea Eagle? Scott probably worked in half the boats down here at one time or another. He's been around them all his life. Why would anybody want to scuttle a $175,000 cabin cruiser? Do you have any idea, sir? When will Scott's body be available? to be moved. I'm really not sure, sir, but I, uh, I can find out for you. Uh, now, please, I, I'd like to be alone. Thank you very much. A 
Chuck Whitfield. Oh. I want to leave a message for him. Have him call me right away. My name is McManus. He has my number. It's important. Here's 5,000. Find out who murdered my son. Listen, if you're so sure it's murder, why don't you take it to the police? They're working on it. I don't need to find out if, just who. When you've got a name, call me. You can start with John Skull. Words out now, Scott was last seen on his boat. Also, my boy took some of my personal property with him when he left. What kind of property? A chest. A little smaller than that one. I want it back. He's dead and you want me to find a chest? There are ways, and it's important to me. It contains uh, personal belongings, family things. Things he wanted to protect you from? What's that supposed to mean? You have a strange way of showing grief for your boy. Watch your step. Mm. I thought you said the Waldorf. Well, with the money that Crowley pays off the information, this is the best we get. You better find him before they tear this place down. Oh, gosh, it's six. This floor may go any minute. Six. Investigator Royster? Yeah, Crowley and Royster. That has a nice ring to it. Yeah, you think so? Now have we come aboard? Sure. Delgado, Tobin, get over and pick up those parts I ordered. Take a good look around, Sergeant. It's just a fishing boat. Yeah, I haven't been on a boat since I got out of the Navy. Except everything over six feet was a ship, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, what can I do for you? We just discovered the body of a Scott McManus washed up on the beach. Now, we've been asking questions, and we just heard that he uh, was a member of the crew here on the Seasport. Yeah, it was, uh, for a couple of short runs. Nice kid. Word around is here, he drowned. He fell off a boat, that was it. This boat, maybe? Yeah, it sounds uh, almost like some sort of, uh, what do they call it, uh, an accusation? It's a very simple question, Mr. Scow, and you can either answer yes or no. Or I could refuse to answer it completely. Yeah, you could. But then uh, the Coast Guard, could hold a special board of inquiry, too. Okay, okay. McManus, uh, he hired on uh, a couple of weeks ago for a percentage of the catch. We fished the Coronados. After a week and two runs and no fish, we pulled into San Diego. The kid shoved off, said he wanted to try his luck on another boat. That's, that's it. Would you call it a coincidence that his body was recovered up here, I mean, north, within 24 hours after you returned to port? You call it what you want. The last time I saw the kid was in San Diego. Okay, Sky, you know, I think I will take you up on that offer to look around. Sure. 
just as soon as you can produce a search warrant. Pea soup. Come on, a little more. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Who are you? You're in a real bed eating real soup. It's not spiked. You need more salt. No, no. no. I'll tell you what I need. I need for you to take your pretty little body down to the corner and give me some sour mash. Give me a little container, any brand that's handy on a shelf, see? I... Now, hold on a minute. You go back in that bottle. You're gonna be a dead man in a month. You don't want that, do you? Where do you come from? I mean, who, 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 uh, who, who, we, who are you people? We, we picked you up yesterday. We're police officers. Ye no, no, even, even if you could stand up, don't try it, Mr. O'Malley. Okay? Just relax. What did I do? Nothing. Well, since when do uh, police officers uh, run at facilities like this for all war out sailors? Since we need your help. <laughs> you need my help? I'm going to tell you one thing, honey. You got to be flat desperate. There you go. Yeah. Hello? Mr. O'Malley, I'm Sergeant Crowley. How you doing? He's doing a lot better than yesterday. You have any luck with Scout? Scout tells me the last time he saw uh, the McManus boy was in San Diego. McManus? Scott? Yeah, that's right. You know him? I sure do. I took him to sea for the first time when he was, uh, I don't know, eight, nine. He is some kind of a sailor man. He's dead, Mr. O'Malley. Now, he might have drowned, but we think uh, maybe not. Oh, no. No, no way that boy drowned, boy. He could swim from here to yonder in four-foot waves. It, is that why you brought me here? We're told that you know everybody in the area, Mr. Romali. Hmm? You ever know a guy named John Scow? Uh, let me put it this way. Don't invite him and me to the same party. <laughs> Can you suggest any place we might go to find out more about this guy, John Scow? Are you going to let me out of here? We'll let you go. Well, in that case, I would suggest that you watch his boat and keep an eye on the rusty bucket. That's a bar down there by the harbor where sailors drink, sailors talk. Sometime after midnight. What about the cops? Oh, oh. 
Where are you going, big boy? What do you want? I just want to talk to you. What about? Well, about some of your dummy friends in there. And a kid named McManus. Lose yourself, Cloud. Being nice to you now. Now you stay out of my way. Right, right, just stay. Hey, how you been? <laughs> Get up now. I just want to talk to you. They'll kill me. After you tell me everything you know, you can just take a trip somewhere, you know, and you won't get hurt that way. was locked. How'd you get in? Well, I never threw that key away. Make yourself at home? Well, I'm trying. Why don't you take that coat off and stay a while? Thanks. I thought you'd never ask. What brings you to town? I can't understand why Crowley doesn't make a move for you. You never let up, do you? No. What brings you to town? Well, I heard you were down on your luck, going to some hard times. So I thought I'd check it out. And I know you can do better than a rusty bucket. Yeah, you can do better than Toad Suck, Texas yourself. Now, that's a good little town. Who have you been seeing? You been dating somebody? Oh, Paul Newman calls two, three times a week, you know. Mm. Uh, Newman, yeah. Yeah, the blue, blue eye. Missed you. Oh, I know. I could tell from all those letters and phone calls. Oh, my. And the flowers. And uh, telegrams. The place was flooded. How could you afford it? Let's not play games. We never did. So let's not start now. Okay? Okay. Here's the John Scott. I don't get it. Well, I'm going to help you out. Now, I saw Crowley down on his boat. And I saw you in that dumb wig and your undercover outfit on that, that dive. And I used to play cop not too long ago, remember? You know, I always did love to listen to you talk. You do? Well, listen. I got a message for Crowley. I want you to give it to him. But don't you tell him where I come from, you understand? I don't know why, but we never, I just can't, we just don't hit it off. Um, uh, you want me to call him now? Mm. Yeah, I, uh, I better. Yeah.
The way he took off, something must have gone down. Any idea what they're up to? No. No, an undercover policewoman overheard part of the conversation about this rendezvous and the location. I don't know. That's your show. Call the shot. Follow the cruiser. Headquarters to Point View. Take the cruiser into custody for questioning. I'm sending helicopter support to pick up the fisher. Yeah, you come up with anything else, let me know, will you? Get this a little bit, will you? I heard it on the way in. You got skunk, huh? Yeah, that was the Coast Guard. The cruiser outran their cutter. They found the cruiser scuttled at the south end of San Carlos Island in a ten feet of water. What about the owner? Well, it doesn't mean anything. It was stolen from Marcos Island. And Scow's boat, was it clean? We'll never know. After the chopper spotted that we couldn't go aboard, I still didn't have a paper. I, t I tell you one thing, that scow's a cool guy. When I questioned him about the speedboat pulling up alongside, he said the guy had uh, tried to buy some lobsters from him. He even had lobster traps set in the water. Hmm. All right, let's go over it again. I want to hear it. I want to hear every word you overheard in that bar yesterday about the rendezvous. I didn't overhear anything worthwhile at the bar. Well, where did you hear it? I got it from Chuck. He told me last night when I got home from the Rusty Bucket. Chuck? Chuck who? Chuck Whitfield. Ken, I'm sorry about Scott. I know. Was he murdered? Well, the autopsy report said he was struck on the head. He didn't drown. This came uh, a few days after Scott left. He uh, just wanted to let me know why he was going. There's more. I've been in a fog since it came. Like it says, he doesn't want me to show it to anyone. When I talked to him later, he said I... I just wanted you to know what was happening. What am I going to do with it, Chuck? Well, I'd like to hold on this for a while if I can. <laughs> Glad to see you guys. He's into me for my next paycheck already. <laughs> really? You know, a guy bought a little house with his exact moves. <laughs> so how's Scott and his group doing? Mr. O'Malley, we got a proposition for you. How would you like to put the sea again? Do what? We've arranged for you to use this boat that was seized by customs in San Diego. Now, we've changed the documentation and everything. We just want you to spread the word around Land's End that you're looking for a crew and some work. Oh, chumming, huh? I mean, I'm going to be the bait. <clears throat> you're going to be the bait. Your doctor says you're OK, and we'll cover you around the clock. Let's get one thing straight up front. Frank, We're asking you. If you don't like it, say so. You find Tobin? No. But I don't think the cops have him. I don't like it. Something spooked that creep. Think we ought to call this trip off? Ah, oh, we can't. Everything's moving now. Look, get a new boat ready. At least a 24-footer. I'll work out a new rendezvous location later. Make sure you're not followed. Right. Uh, stay there with Phil. I want to talk to you. Honey, how about a cup of coffee? No, I want to know. I want to know. You know, Crowley, you'll never change. 
I want to know where you got your information on Scow. That rendezvous this morning. You know, when I was a cop down in Texas, I wouldn't even ask them stupid questions. Yeah, well, you're not a cop in Texas, not pal, so. No, I ain't. You ain't my pal either, Crowley, so don't call me pal. I'm going to be around half cocked all the time. That's why she won't marry you. I love the way you just make your little pit stop every couple of years. Expect Pepper just to drop whatever she's doing. That's... Are you some kind of an expert on what's good for her? You got a problem. I'll tell you what your problem is. My problem? Yeah, you got a problem. See, you don't, <clears throat> you don't have the ability to show your true feelings for her. And you're sitting back very comfortable seeing a little relationship where there's no commitment. But let someone else show a little interest. And old play it safe, Crowley starts feeling threatened. Hi. I hear you're looking for work. Uh, is your boat for hire? Well, depends on what for. I want to haul a load of shrimp up from Wymus. Are you interested? Huh? What do you use for a crew? I got a mate. Okay. Get her fueled up and ready to go. We'll shove off at 1600 tomorrow. You didn't say anything about money. Oh, that's right. <laughs> How about $100 a ton? Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, in case I have to contact you, you sleep on board, don't you? Well, it sure beats sleeping in the water, don't it? <laughs> it sure does. I'll see you. He sleeps in the boat. Uh -huh. Well, if you pour on the coal, we'll go back a couple hours after dawn. We'll uh, meet right here. Right. Hey, you're not going to get me on this thing. I get seasick just looking at them. It's tied up. <laughs> not going to move. Yeah. I thought you said it didn't move. Oh. What about Delgado? Well, he wants this boat ready at 1,600 hours tomorrow. He wants me to haul some shrimp from Guaymas. The only thing is that this is not the shrimp-carrying boat, so I would think that they are uh, up to something. Sounds good. How are you doing? What you really mean is, uh, have I had a drink yet, huh? I feel that I added a little extra pressure on you. No. No pressure. Maybe this is just what it took. It's been a long, long time. Wish I could kick it. How long have you been on the sauce? Too long. Ever since my wife died. Lovely lady. She was really my strength. We didn't have any, uh, kids. I lost everything and finally took the boat away from me. Tell you one thing. You can't skip a fishing boat when you're... drunk. Okay, Pop. Plans have changed. Crank her up while I pull in the lines. And your little barmaid friend there can be your mate. You said 1,600 hours. I said shove off. Now. Get back there with me. 
with her. Move! you understand that reckoning, you're never going to keep that rendezvous. What the hell are you talking about? Well, the compass, the uh, direction finder navigation laid, I'm afraid are not working too good. I mean, I started to, well, you know, tinker around with them. I, <laughs> I guess I lost my touch. Why, you dirty... She's sick. Now, you better untie her if you want to keep that meat. How much longer is it going to take you guys to cover that area? We pinpointed correctly, an hour, an hour and a half more. That's great. She's been out there eight hours now. Sergeant, I'm being asked. How is it possible they pirated the boat when the police were watching it? You guys want to tell him? Well, uh, the first one we did, but Mallie was taking pepper for a rash around the harbor. As far as I'm concerned, it's a case for homicide. We got four people dead. That weed seizure's got to be incidental to that. Well, there had to be more people involved. Has anybody else been caught? San Francisco PD picked up a confederate uh, named Tobin, male Caucasian, this morning. Incidentally, I, uh, <clears throat> well, at this point, it's just a rumor, but I've heard that for your assistance in this investigation, Treasury's thinking about uh, returning your old boat to you. My old boat? Jack, why didn't you tell us that Scow had bought it from you and changed the name to Seasport? Hmm. Yeah, well, that's uh, 
you know, just kind of a personal thing, I guess. I actually, I guess I don't like to see a lady's name change. Now, <clears throat> sure. got something important I want to talk to you about. Okay, go ahead, open it. We both like to see what's inside. I paid you good money. Yeah, you did. First to find your boy's killer, they're in jail. Second to find your property, and there it is. So open it. Open it. All right, I'll open it. What do you think, Mr. McManus? About two million dollars worth? Was it worth your boys lying? I'm going to read you your constitutional rights. I don't know what happened to old man, Karen. When I found out he'd gone into the drug business, too, something inside of me burst. I remembered a few buddies in them, how the lousy heroin ruined them. And so I took a chest he had, and I hid it. Then he ended up with more crooks and got killed. World sure is ironic sometimes. Very sickening. Yeah. But we've got you in it. So that kind of balances it out. You and your sweet talk, you know? I know you don't mean it, and I fall for it every time. Just keep falling. <laughs> What's with you and Crowley? We're both interested in the same thing. You, my doll. Well, that's why you called me once. <clears throat> I'm uh, interrupting something? No, nothing you haven't interrupted before. Good. You ready? Uh, where are we going? Well, Manley is so tickled to have his boat back, he wants you and me to be the first visitors. Oh, that's great. Sure. And you're coming with us. Well, he said you and him. That's uh, probably a little crowded, but <clears throat> no, I guess we can squeeze in. Oh, what is it, a christening or something? Yeah, he's naming it the uh, one for the road. 